Aloha kakahiaka kako. It is my honor as CEO of the King Lunalilo Trust and Lunalilo Home to share with you a little bit about the legacy of King William Charles Lunalilo. I'm Dr. Diane Paloma and I am the CEO of the King William Charles Lunalilo Trust and Lunalilo Home. It was here in Kauai Ha'o Church that he was coronated on January 9th, 1873, so just about 148 years ago, and laid to rest the following year, unfortunately, in 1874. Here at Honua Kaha, Kauai Ha'o serves as a place where he resides after a short but fulfilling life. He was our servant leader for Hawaiians. We continue that legacy with our organization, Lunalilo Home, located in Mauna Lua, Hawaii Kai, better known. And I'd like to recognize and acknowledge our trustees, Mr. Harvey McInerney and Mr. Kamani Kualaau, and our advisory board to the trustees. I would also like to acknowledge the management and staff of Lunalilo Home, our directors, our managers, and our frontline staff who have been keeping our kupuna safe. Most of all, I'd like to recognize the kupuna, those seen and unseen who continue to guide us and are the reason why this legacy endures. Mahalo to Kauai Ha'o Church and the members for the long-standing relationship that the Lunalilo Trust has with this vahipana and being guardian and steward of this final resting place for him. Mahalo to our royal societies who tirelessly support the legacies of our ali'i, the various Hawaiian civic clubs, and in particular, the Ko'olau Poko Hawaiian Civic Club for always taking that kuleana to clean the tomb before his birthday. And I'd also like to thank the students and faculty from the Lunalilo dorm and the Kekauluohi dorms who continue to recognize this legacy in the namesakes of our ali'i. We value this opportunity to honor and recognize the king and his legacy on his birthday, January 31st, 1835. We all know of his gift to his people through the care and the comfort of kupuna, but there are also many things that may be unknown to most of us. Did you know that he once owned over 400,000 acres of land across the Hawaiian archipelago? This is more than the Kamehameha Schools land owns today and over twice as much as the current Department of Hawaiian Homelands. These sites include the former Makiki residence just up the street here near Roosevelt High School in Kewalo. It included all of Kapahulu and Leahi, better known as Diamond Head. It included Mikali and Mo'ili'ili, where the Lunalilo Elementary School stands today. It included Ha'ena, Ke'a'au, and parts of Puna on Hawaii Island, where we attribute the birthplace of Hula in the mele Keha'ala Puna. And it included his marine residence in Waikiki, Kalua Okau, that he bequeathed to Queen Emma upon his death, now better known as the International Marketplace and still owned by the Queen's Health Systems. And in speaking of the Queen's Health Systems, did you know that he also wrote the national anthem, Eola Kealii Keakua, better known as God Save the King, as a young man during King Kamehameha IV's reign. King Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma, as you know, were the founders of the Queen's Hospital and now the Queen's Medical Center. In that song contest, he won $10 ooh, for that entry. And in today's world, that would probably equate to about three or $400. He attempted to make the kingdom a more democratic society with less power to the throne, allowing non-landowners to retain the right to vote. And many of those non-landowners at the time were Kanaka Maoli. He protected the Hawaiian interests of the Pearl River, now known as Pearl Harbor, upon learning of the people's desires. He would later concede, or this would later concede to the US military, but know that it was Luna Lilo who initially defended the home of Ka'ahupahau and her ohana. 
He, was a, he appointed a board of health to investigate and care for the people on Kalau Papa suffering from Hansen's disease. And much like today, where we're experiencing the highly infectious disease fueled by the coronavirus, we continue to lead with health and safety in mind for our residential care home and our adult daycare. So while Luna Lilo's reign was short, his impact was wide. And this poses the greatest example for us as an ali'i having profound impacts to his people. This past year posed the greatest of challenges to all of us with COVID-19 influencing each of our lives. We've had to close some services in the past year and then reopen them and limit visits and do all sorts of coronavirus measures. But we also found great strides in this past year in the expansion of our meal delivery program and increased our home meal production at Lunalilo Home by about a thousand percent. And yes, I redid the math over and there is such a thing as a thousand percent. We've maintained our ability to curb any potential outbreaks in our organization. And I attribute this to our staff and our management that held constant while the world transformed around us. I'm now happy to say that this week, coming on February 5th, Kupuna and staff will be receiving the second of our COVID-19 vaccine and that we are on our way to a recovery of all sorts, taking you all with us. And while we have this continued infinite need in our community for kupuna care, we do have finite resources and are cognizant to this challenge. King Lunalilo's vision provides us strength and guidance as we continue to progress to all of the best that we can. I would like to offer a ho'okupu at the tomb and I will do that um, and offer a oli that speaks to the centering of our space and time. So in the tomb, I will deliver the oli, Helani Koluna, which talks about the heavens above and the aina below, honoring those in front of us as well as those behind us and welcoming us into this space together. For together is the only way that we are going to progress against the challenges laid before us. So may we all strive to embrace, cherish, and preserve these values of our kupuna and let this gift from them become and ensure a generation of future value. Mahalo and aloha. <laughs> Okay, oh.